Um, and now we're going to listen to Kevin Christin, who is a PhD candidate at Aix Marseille University and a former student of the École Normale Supérieure de Lyon. His research focuses on the intersections between literature, science and technology in the 19th century. In his project, he examines the connections between Robert Louis Stevenson and engineering, and he traces significant fe features of the author's literary works to his knowledge and practical experience of the technical world. His investigation follows the itinerary of Stevenson across disciplines, from his early training in applied sciences to his anthropological work in the colonial context of the Pacific. So, in a letter written in October 1874 to his mother, Robert Louis Stevenson declared, You must understand that I shall be a nomad, more or less until my days be done. Today, this relatively well-known passage conveys the stereotyped image of Stevenson, the bohemian traveller, uh, who later went to America and the South Seas. At the time when it was written, the author was in London and had just completed a walking tour in the Chiltern Hills. Uh, the letter reflects the vivid impression produced by this short trip, which was later described in an autumn effect. However, to be fully understood, Stevenson's exaltation must be considered within the larger context of that, of that period of his life. A year earlier, his decaying health had forced him to depart suddenly to Menton, where he had failed to recover as quickly as he hoped. Because of his condition, Stevenson had already visited the region as a child, and he later returned to it with his wife, Fanny Stevenson, for the same reasons. So far from being guided by a personal thirst for adventure, these journeys uh, were determined by the geography of medical knowledge at the time. And as such, they were part of the growing phenomenon of medical tourism, which reached its climax in the second half of the, of the 19th century. Stevenson's journey to Menton, later described, uh, uh, sorry, later described in Audit, Audit South, inaugurated both a life of struggle and travel on the routes of this specific form of tourism. So considered in such a line is walking tours and other journeys not only appear as personal adventures, but also as moments uh, of respite following a crisis, or worse, potentially preceding one. Um, and in this uh, paper, I will examine how Stevenson shaped these personal journeys in contrast with his, exper with his experience uh, of mobility as an invalid, quote-unquote. I will argue that the opposition between his forced travel and his adventures led him to develop a particular sense of pleasure, alternately anchored in the active exertion of his body and in the abandonment to complete idleness. This pattern also led the author to partake in the emergence of new forms of European tourism in this period. Stevenson's wanderings have constituted a main entry uh, in his life, in the study of his life and works. In recent years, his travels for health have featured prom prominently in a 2009 uh, collection of articles on his uh, European journeys. A close study of Audit South also appeared in 2016 in a volume on uh, Pro uh, Provence and the British imagination. These works provide a mine of biographical details, shedding light on the author's experience. They also underline the influence of his health trip uh, on his immediate essays and much later fictions. Uh, but today I'd like to, um, well, the idea is that Stevenson's early, uh, early personal travels for pleasure have too rarely been read against the background of this experience uh, of his illness. So drawing from the scholarship on the history of tourism and medicine, I will focus on the period from the author's stay in Menton to his first visit in Davos. And between these years, Stevenson repeatedly fashioned his personal travels in opposition to his diminished condition um, and the re reductive life that came with it. Uh, so there'll be three parts. I'll be very canonical. I'll, I'll indicate when I move from one to the other. So the first one is pleasure and travel for health. I'd like to set the background of his experience as a uh, quote-unquote an invalid. So the two main afflictions which led Stevenson to be sent on the roads of health tourism. Uh, th so there are two main afflictions. The change of era becomes standard practice in the treatment of nervous crises like melancholy since 19th century. Uh, and when Stevenson experienced such a low emotional state in 1873, Dr. Clark unsurprisingly recommended a change of scene to restore his young, sp young patient's spirits. But there was also another concern behind Stevenson's uh, uh, fatigue. And obviously, as you know it, uh, the other affliction which threatened uh, him uh, was secondary in Clark's diagnosis, but eventually represented a major cause for concern during the author's entire life. 
as opposed to nervous breakdowns, consumption of tizis, later called tuberculosis, was part of the class of physiological diseases. And due to the lack of specific treatment, change of air also appeared as an appropriate response in that case. So now, in considering Stevenson's experience, uh, let's remember that, travel, uh, that health travel included some kinds of pleasures. Uh, the region where patients travelled were appreciated not only for their climate, but also for their scenery. Um, also, not everyone could afford to stay in these regions and benefit from all their amenities for several months. The hotspots of health tourism attracted the elite of the time, and pleasures, pleasure sorry, was often synonym, synonym of expensive lifetime, lifestyle. Part, sorry. In his letters, Stevenson provides detailed description, descriptions of his social life in that context. So I won't dwell uh, on this for too long, but, but his uh, active life does appear through his uh, letters during this period. And yet, despite this dec decorum, Stevenson adopts a much more melancholic tone in his writings from this period. Such divide between an apparently ideal setting and the reality of his life with a medical condition characterizes the structure of ordered South, while the, op the opening paragraphs depict the beauty of landscapes and the initial excitement of travelling, this pleasant atmosphere soon disappears behind the stagnant habit of the visitor once arrived at his place of residence. Quote, the world is disenchanted for him, he seems to himself to touch things with muffled hands and to see them through a veil. So the, wor the word pleasure does um, keep coming up in this uh, essay, but only as something the world appears to be de deprived of. So among the elements which made Stevenson's travels for health, a particularly traumatic experience was precisely the figure he came to embody on these trips. Uh, far from the image of the adventurous nomad, the author was forced to perceive himself as, I, I quote, an invalid and contemplate the limitations of his own body. A few months after he returned from Menton, uh, this impression of himself was still lingering. Uh, I quote, I have made up my mind to go home by sea for the sake of the wicked car case and to go, uh, and to go on Saturday. Also, because uh, health represented the central purpose of these journeys, the individual was led to exert constant self-monitoring and regularly inform friends and family of the evolution of his state. So this reduction of one's own image uh, to a diminished figure was a dialectic process in which relatives played an important part. Moreover, if patients were sometimes expected to recover on their own in the regions where the climate was considered healthy, serious cases required close sc scrutiny. Such attention was provided by institutions like hydropathic centers and sanatoria, which around the 1870s had already started functioning like uh, touristic resorts proposing specific therapeutic services. In a series of articles written in Davos, the author describes the regulated habits of, the, of patients there, their tightly controlled physical activity, for example, and in practice visitors were often condemned to immobility and pleasure with moderation, which could represent a particularly uh, frustrating experience, obviously. And finally, if Stevenson's visit to Menton and Davos capture important aspects uh, of his experience of travelling for health, uh, his condition also tremendously impacted his daily life beyond these two specific journeys. Between 1874 and 1881, he experienced relapses marked by violent hemorrhages. While he was at home in Edinburgh, in France near Paris, and in California as well. So it is against this background that he developed his conception of his personal travels. So that'll be my second point. Stevenson's personal journeys. Stevenson went on a yachting trip with Walter Simpson in summer 1874, a couple of months after coming back from Menton. He then completed his more famous canoe trip between Belgium and France in summer 1876, which was published in 1878. That the question of health remained a central pre preoccupation for him during these journeys become visible in his letter. letters. I quote, the healthy, jolly open air open air life is the fountain of youth to me. So this is on the Yacht Heron uh, with, um, with since Simpson, his first trip in 1874. This concern was also, uh, also clearly appears at various points in his published narratives, especially in an inland voyage. Thinking about the peaceful life of the barge owners he encounters at the beginning of his trip, Stevenson declares, there is not enough exercise in such a life for any high measure of health, but a high measure of health is only necessary for unhealthy people. The slug of a fellow who is never ill nor well 
has a quiet time of it in life and dies all the easier. So the opening judgment almost sounds like a doctor's advice, but the following remark, although general in tone, becomes much more personal when considered from the perspective of the author's experience. Identifying with the unhealthy, uh, Stevenson presents physical exercise as an absolute necessity uh, in his constant struggle against uh, his frail condition. The question of health appears against, uh, again sorry, in the next chapter and is this time situated in direct relation to pleasure. Quote, uh, for will anyone dare to tell me that business is more entertaining than fooling among boats? You must have never seen a boat or never seen an office who says so. And for certain, the one is a great deal better for the health. Health unexpectedly emerges in a comment at the end of a reflection on the opposition between work or business uh, and pleasure. The structure of the passage therefore shows that the question of health or the fear of a potential lack of it um, was not only present in Stevenson's mind but encroached on several aspects of his thought. Later in the narrative, its association with pleasure comes even more direct, um, becomes even more direct and detached from any reference to the body. Describing his enjoyment while watching the automata of the town hall clock in, Com in Compiègne, Stevenson concludes, I had a great deal of healthy pleasure from their manoeuvres. So health here comes to define a particular form of pleasure situated at the core of a purely aesthetic sensation. So no relation to the body. It's, it's a, uh, it becomes an aesthetic concept. Thus the question of health regularly springs up in an inland voyage. But the mark uh, of Stevenson's condition upon his personal journeys goes beyond the few coded references to, uh, in the narrative. His experience of his condition uh, manifests itself more indirectly through the way he framed his own adventures during this period. So, along his, his expedition with Walter Simpson, Stevenson completed a series of other canoe trips and walking journeys, which he described uh, in letters and essays, and in his most famous travel narrative, Travels with a Donkey in the Seven. The high measure of physical effort which uh, these journeys required appears in radical contrast with his experience of limited mobility, First, the author's personal journeys differed in terms of locations, uh, as they were often situated away from the main routes of tourism at the time. More precisely, they partook in an alternative form of tourism that was just emerging. Far from the comforts and immobility of popular resorts, uh, the outdoor adventure associated travel with mobility itself and relied on the forces of the body rather than modern means of transportation. Stevenson sums up this conception in one of the most famous passages of travel with Travels with a Donkey. I quote, For my part, I travel not to go anywhere but to go. I travel for travel's sake. The great affair is to move, to feel the needs and hitches of our life more nearly, to come down of this feather bed of civilization and find the globe granite underfoot and strewn with cutting flints. So borrowing images from the natu natural sciences, the author values the search for immediate and rough contact with the world through travel. His journeys involved camping outside or being exposed to bad weather conditions, which he perceived, perceived as a way of putting his frail constitution to the test, as the letters of his first yachting trip shows, I quote, and my health is better. I work like a common sailor when it is needful, in rain and in wind without hurt. These harsh conditions also provided grounds for, for, ground for misadventures. Stevenson's narratives describe them in detail and with a lot of humor, but the parts of uncertainty in the journey and the challenges posed to the body are precisely what made adventure with its specific kind of pleasure possible. And there is a particular moment uh, which I'm interested in, in in an inland voyage. It's that moment when um, there is a tree across uh, the river and Stevenson is forced to like catch it and, and let his... Uh, canoe slide below. Uh, so it, be, it turns into a moment of adventure, basically, in, in, uh, which costs him a lot of strength. And in this passage from an inland voyage, the physical struggle with the outside world ceases to belong to the realm of the passive invalid, to become part of the world of the active traveller. Uh, pain and effort suddenly take a positive value as they derive from a desired exertion which leaves its mark marks on the body, but they become pleasurable. The damage caused to the author's hands echoes the passage from the letters he wrote in his uh, yachting expedition. My hands are, as, are hard and stiff and I have forgotten how, how to write. The inability to move or write often accompanied Stevenson's relapses and plunged him in a terrible state of frustration. 
yet here these turn into a particular pleasure that of becoming i quote stupid uh, as the author liked to call it and that will be the my my third point in which Contrary to the second one in which Stevenson enjoyed feeling uh, his body on his uh, trips, in that case, he experienced intense levity and uh, detachment from the body. So if Stevenson's travels for health and personal journeys carry two opposite experiences of pain and effort, the same logic applies to the description of, wha of that state of stupidity. During his personal journeys, Stevenson found in the active exertion of his, sta of his strength a response to the lethargic and dramatically diminished state into which he felt trapped when, he when his health decayed. And his letters show that uh, his body often became a burden during these moments of crisis. So I'll only quote one example. Uh, for example, uh, this morning I am so ill that I can see nothing else for it than to crawl very cautiously home. The self-deprecating tone involved in the verb crawling echoes the image of the wicked carcass quoted earlier. Uh, and these references to the deficient body as a ponderous mass having to be dragged usually went together with a, with a description of the mental and emotional march in which Stevenson was plunged. Yet during his adventures, the author also came to experience the exhilarating sensation that could be associated with, that state of with a state of uh, spiritual lethargy. Beyond uh, moments of hard exertion, the spread out efforts involved in Stevenson's journeys led him to enjoy an unex unexpected state of spiritual levity marked by a complete detachment from his body. This superior form of pleasure often appears near the end of the journey and is presented at its as its highest accomplishment. Stevenson describes this experience with precision in an inland voyage, and I'm referring here uh, to a passage situated near the end when he's just paddling and, and just, well, getting lost in that repetitive movement. I'll just quote the first sentence. I had need of all my cerebral hygiene during that paddle's day. The old devotee stuck in my throat solely, but I was soon in the seventh heaven of stupidity and knew nothing about, uh, but that somebody was paddling a canoe, etc., etc. So the beginning of the passage where Stevenson uses the notion of cerebral hygiene to refer to his ability to focus is symptomatic of the medical jargon he absorbed as a patient. These considerations for the traveler, traveler's mind introduce the description of Stevenson's meditative state as a result of the hypnotic repetition, repetition of paddling. Instead of showing the body as uh, in a heroic struggle against natural elements, the author records the experience of its separation from his mind, leaving the latter in a sort of blessed levity. This same impression of suspension appears near the end of, tra of tra sorry, Travels with a Donkey in one of the rare pictures of Stevenson's harmonious progression with his donkey, uh, Modestine, upon the poetic background of the falling night. So the joyful, the joyful feeling of peacefulness and compassion provided by this state of mind, coming from moderate exercise and a great degree of not thinking too much, is precisely what S Stevenson called being stupid. And this term starts appearing in his letters written uh, in, uh, in his, on his first journey uh, with Simpson in Frankfurt in 1872. And it comes back again during their first yachting expedition. I quote, I am so stupid, I never do think. I prattle and I'm very easily satisfied with my own uh, and other people's jests. I eat, I drink, I bathe in the brini, I sleep. Here, rather than being separate, mind and body appear fully united in the enjoyment in the enjoyment of the most basic pleasures of life. With playful irony, Stevenson presents this sensation derived from the unconstrained freedom of the body and the mind as his own therapy. Later, during that same period, he further theorized and aestheticized that, that state of stupidity. Indeed, the term was replaced by a more refined and publicly accept acceptable notion, that of idleness, uh, to which the author dedicated his, uh, an essay. The connection between his thoughts on being idle and uh, the enduring concern for health lying at the core of his journey appears clearly in his definition of the two figures of the idler and the industrious. He, the idler, has had time to take care of his health and his spirit. He's uh, is, is been a great deal in the open air, which is the most salutary thing uh, for both body and mind. And the uh, industrious, on the contrary, extreme busyness, whether at school or college, Kirk or market, is a symptom of deficient vitality. So in that short essay, Stevenson not only plays the philosopher with the assurance of a doctor, he also provides his own medical recommendations on mental and physical hygiene and grounds his authority in the use of a technical vocabulary. 
What then differentiates his prescription from the frame which surrounded the daily life of patients like him in the locations of his medical travels and their institutions? Far from imposing restrictions, Stevenson's rule uh, invites his valid counterparts to find pleasure in the experience of their own liberty. Uh, his essay is a call for living and feeling the intensity of life. And to conclude, reading Stevenson's travel narratives means entering a world of changing landscapes, comic misadventures, chance encounters, and witty thoughts and comments. This world full of life takes a different tone when considered upon the background uh, of the author's experience of health. The signs of his condition appear throughout the narrative and reveal the looming traumatic memory of his past crisis uh, behind the enjoyment of his adventures. Thus, all the defined in opposition, the author's travels for health and personal journeys share a common foundation, that of having to live with such a condition. And Stevenson, uh, just to finish, Stevenson managed to derive a powerful creative potential for, from his situation. The type of outdoor adventures he describes in his narratives was still relatively new and marginal in Europe, uh, compared to the standard form of popular tourism that was developing at the time. In that context, Stevenson helped define the practical and mental frame that was to be associated with these journeys, and which remained very much active until these days, are the figures, like Leslie Stephen, who advertised his mountain expedition, offered more challenging versions of the outdoor journey. But Stevenson's travels value a less arduous vision of, of adventure, in which the uh, sick, the inexperienced traveller, and the philosophical idler can all find a form of accomplishment. Thank you.